<laughs> That's good. I hope that uh, John Williams comes this morning. He yeah. said he sent me a message that has just really blessed my socks off. No. <laughs> yeah, we need that, right? Yes, we do. Share. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Well, I'll tell you, I've never heard of this woman before. And she was just such a blessing. And she was pre preaching at a conference. And she was teaching on Hebrews 5 and 6. Mm. And I have never heard this before. Mm. And boy, <laughs> it just resonates in my spirit. And it is just wonderful. And she was saying how the book of Hebrews, you know, the whole the whole thing of the book of Hebrews is telling them that God has always tried to reveal his son. Mm. In yeah. Old Testament times, in sundry times, in diverse places, yeah. God has spoken, okay? Yeah. And it was always trying to reveal his truth. Yes. Right. And um, now these people, these Hebrews, are believers. They have received Christ. Mm -hmm. but, but now they're going back. They're going back to Judaism. Mm -hmm. and, and you really have to understand that in order to understand what the author is saying in five and six. Yeah. And he tells them that, you know, they've been in this thing long enough that they should be teachers by now. Mm. He says, I, I he was telling them about Melchizedek. Mm. He says, I can't tell you these things because you have become dull of hearing. Mm. Okay. Yeah. They weren't always dull of hearing, yeah. they have become dull of hearing. Why? Yeah. Because they had reverted back to Judaism. Right. Yes. And what does the scripture say in Galatians? And this ties it all together. He says uh, in Galatians, he says, anyone who is trying to be justified by the works of the law has fallen from grace. Mm. Well, grace is the divine influence of God upon our heart. Right. And it's reflected in our life. Mm -hmm. Well, when they reverted back to the beggarly elements of the world, then they're no longer receiving that divine influence and they become dull in their hearing, okay? Right. And so he says, this is so, so good. He says, um, you have need of milk and not strong drink, uh, strong meat. He says, for everyone that uses milk, is unskillful in the word of righteousness, okay? Unskillful in the word of righteousness is you don't know who you are in Christ. Mm, if right. you don't know who you are in Christ, then you're like a blind man. You don't know where you're going or what's going on, okay? Mm. And uh, then he says, this is what really blew my mind. Mm go straight into six. Therefore, because of this, because you become dull of hearing, he says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, <laughs> not laying again the foundations of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God of the doctrine of baptisms and the laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment and this we will do if God permit. She says, now what you've got to understand is, this is not talking about Christian principles. She says, you know, the enemy has really mm -hmm. deceived people mm -hmm. to believe that the author is telling them, you've got to stop these fundamental Christian truths in order to go on to perfection. Mm -hmm. He says he's not talking about Christian principles. He's talking about Judaism mm -hmm. and all of these things yeah. that they reverted back to 
was the types and the shadows. Here we have Christ has come, and now they've gone back to the shadows that pointed to Christ. Yeah. She says, uh, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. She says, you know, people think God is saying, okay, you got to move on from repentance mm. in order to grow in Christ. Mm. He's not talking about that. Mm. She says, every time we get revelation, we have repentance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. we're having a change of mind. Yeah. Yes. We're constantly going from glory to glory. Yes. We're, we're constantly having our mind renewed to the mind of Christ. So he's not talking about this. He's talking about leaving the doctrine of repentance from dead works. Yeah. You got to stop looking at yourself and what you're doing and look to Christ. Right. And the doctrine of baptisms. She says, right. you know, the Old Testament was filled with baptisms. They baptized their pens. They baptized their sources. They yeah. baptized their hands. They baptized their feet. Everything was washing, washing, washing. And you have to realize you are washed once and for all by the blood of Jesus Christ. And and the laying on of hands. Mm -hmm. She says, can anybody think that the author of Hebrews is telling Christians to stop believing in the doctrine of laying on of hands? Right. She says, you know, we see that the, the Holy Spirit has been conferred by the laying on of hands, yeah. gifts of the Spirit healing let let the elders lay hands on you mm. and the prayer of faith will heal the sick so what is he talking about he's talking about the old way of how they laid their hands on the the goat remember the laying on of hands putting their sins on the sin offering mm. Mm. okay oh my goodness this is just so wonderful and of eternal judgment. She says, do you know? She says the body of Christ is so eternally insecure. It's pathetic. Because they're still believing in eternal judgment. Yeah. We have been judged in Christ. Well, they're thinking and eternal punishment. Eternal punishment. Yeah. You see? And this is what really just floated my boat. Mm -hmm. She said Hebrews. She says, you know what the word Hebrews means? Crossing over. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Crossing over. Mm. You can't cross over unless you leave this behind. And mm. in, in Joshua 1a, oh, this, this message just blessed me so much. Mm. In Joshua, the Lord said to Moses, and it's so funny because I've heard people say, and I've even said it myself, you know, they never found the body of Moses. And some people say, you know, on the Mount of Transfiguration, there was Moses and Elijah and Jesus. Elijah, we know, was caught up. And people say Moses was caught up also because they never found his body. Well, is that a bunch of hogwash? Because right here, the Lord says to Joshua in Joshua 1, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass, the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses minister saying Moses my servant is dead now if God says he's dead baby he's dead <laughs> pretty obvious huh yeah and he says he says now therefore arise and go over Jordan look mm -hmm. at that cross over cross over yeah we were talking we were talking <clears throat> about that yesterday not to interrupt but we we're actually talking about Jordan and how Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan and what Jordan signified. So that's, that just confirms what, 
you know, what everything you're saying right yeah. now. Yeah. You know, the thing is, he's saying, listen, he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Mm -hmm. Therefore, arise and go over Jordan. You can't go over Jordan with Moses. No. Because no. Moses was the lawgiver. And mm -hmm. the law cannot bring you into the promise. And Joshua is the same name as Jesus. As a matter of fact, in Hebrews 4, it speaks of, um, let me turn that. I want to inject too. I want to inject too, uh, Bula too. That and I was listening to Phelan too, which was an awesome message. I think he put up there just recently, talking about the self life. Okay, you can't cross the the Jordan with the self life. That is exactly <laughs> what she's saying. That's exactly <laughs> what she's saying. It says in uh, in Hebrews four in my King James. It says, uh, verse 7, again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if you hear his voice, hold not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? And that would, that's Joshua, okay? Mm -hmm. So... It took Joshua or G is Savior, okay? Yeah. So it took the Savior to bring him into the promise. Yeah. So you can't cross over Jordan. And that, the Hebrew word crossing over is especially Jordan. Mm. So you cannot, you cannot go on into perfection as uh, Hebrew 6 says, if you're holding on to the beggarly elements of the world, which is the law. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And you know, as I was reading it, it reminded me of uh, Galatians 4. It goes right with it. How are you feeling? Honey? I'm good. I'm good. good. <laughs> It says here, now stop and think like what we're talking about in Hebrews, then still going by the old types. It says, now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father even so we when we were children were in bondage under the elements of the world mm -hmm. yeah but when the fullness of time was come god sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons and because Ye are sons. God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. Yes. If a son, then you're an heir of God through Christ. How be it, then, when ye knew not, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them, which by nature are no gods, but now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how mm. turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto you desire again mm. to be bondage? You mm. have sort of days and months and times. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Mm. Okay, he's not going to join so the the weak and beggarly elements and when when i heard that this morning in my spirit weak is without strength i looked it up it's without strength well that took me to romans 5 mm. and it says 
I love it when the Holy Ghost just connects all the dots. Yes. He says in uh, Romans 5, 6, for when we were yet without strength, that's the same word as weak that we just read in Galatians. Strength. When we were without strength, when we were weak, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. Mm. But God commendeth his love toward us mm. in while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, which we were enemies in our mind, not mm -hmm. in God's mind, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Now, you see, the thing is this. You can't hold on to Moses and expect the life of Christ to save you. It's and that when I'm not talking about eternal salvation here, I'm talking about the saving power, the strength, the efficiency of Christ's blood working in our lives. If we are not depending on Christ for our life, then we are still under the weak and beggarly elements of the world. And that weak is without strength and beggarly is a beggar. You're yeah. always going to have a beggar spirit. You're always going to have a poverty spirit. You're always going to feel like you're outside and not in. You're always going to feel like you lack. Right. And you can only, you can only realize by the spirit of adoption, I yeah. am in, I'm not out. I'm I don't a know. partaker. I don't know if you listen to films, but it would really um, solidify what you're hearing this uh, uh, film's last message. Um, I'll have to listen about to the it. Self life, because really, when we're talking about the law, we're talking about the self life or Absolutely. looking for the strength of your own self. Right. Yeah. Life. And uh, he made a, he always makes a, a great couple of one liners all through. But he, he says, if we go to, if we keep going to church, you know, and, and hearing uh, the watered down gospel of what we need to do for God. Okay. Uh, then all it's going to produce is very educated orphans. Yes. And not sons. It, it will not do anything to, to bring us into that reality of sonship. And it dumbs you down. And Christ becomes of no effect. That's no the effect. word that I got. Christ becomes of no effect. It's like we're not saying that Jesus isn't in you. No. But it's like he's not there. Exactly. Disqualified. Yeah. Amen. That's it. There's no, there's no power for, to bring forth the life. I mean, the life, the fruit of his life, you know, you can't be filled with the fruit of his life as long as you're seeking life by, by the self life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. What you just said, Jim, made me think of Galatians 2 and 20. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ now liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. I do not frustrate. That means to set aside, to disesteem, to reject the grace of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. exactly what you're doing when Christ, you're not looking at Christ as your life. And the thing is, <laughs> in Christ, we died. Okay? It, it's done. Right. We died in Christ. It's done. Mm -hmm. But as Romans 6 says, it says, it says in verse 10, for in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. 
Mm. Likewise, reckon yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin and alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm. That's where it's at right there. Mm. It's our reckoning. It's our having our mind renewed to the truth of what the finished work did for us. Amen? Yeah. And she said, she said that uh, her name is Dr. Irvina Tompkins, mm. wonderful speaker. Mm. And she said that the Jews, the Jews believe in the coming of Christ. They look forward to it. They look forward to the seed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when the seed came, right, they rejected it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she said that you have to receive the seed and that seed has to die. Mm. And mm. until that seed dies and mm. you realize that you are dead to self and alive to God, she said, you will take every revelation that God gives you and you will twist it and you will pervert it and you will take it to yourself as something that you have to do. Mm. Right. Yeah. Which will keep you uh, bound as an orphan. Absolutely. You can't go past a beggar. No, you can't cross over. We see a lot of begging you know, uh, in the church today, yes. people begging for God to do this and God to do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's really, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing, I guess, because I was there too at one oh, time, yeah. you know, and it's just like all the pleading, begging, you know, and the twisting of the arm. And we've even, like you said, we've, because of that carnal um, mind, we've actually taken faith and twisted it into something. Oh, is, yeah. You oh, know, yeah about you know pounding on the door. <laughs> you know when he says clearly he says he's not the unjust judge no he's our righteous father right but i was i was when you talk about the the child um and immaturity it took me to first corinthians 13 11 when paul says when i was a child well when was he a child when he was under the law right <laughs> when i was a child you know, he's coming to Revelation, right? Hey, this was this was actually being used to, you know, keep me in a place uh, of of seeing myself as a, as an orphan and not a son. And he says, "When I was a child, I spake as a child." <laughs> so that goes to whatever you believe in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. That's yeah, right. absolutely. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, and I believe when he says became a man, he came into revelation of yeah. the new man, of the new creation that he was in Christ and through the finished work. I put away childish things. And he's really in this whole context, he's talking about love, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He's talking about love and he's talking about how that we are not going to bear the fruit of this love as long as we're trying to live the self-life. But I've got to, I've got to inject that I believe that uh, Paul is not saying he arrived in that scripture. No. Uh -uh, because no. in verse 12, he says, for now, right, right now, we see through a glass darkly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But then that's future mm -hmm. face to face. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that goes with uh, 1 John 3. Mm. Let me turn there. Because John said the same thing. He says, behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and yet it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, mm. we shall be yeah. like him, for we shall see him as he is. Mm -hmm. So right now we're looking 
in the face of Jesus Christ as a mirror, we're beholding the glory mm -hmm. of the Lord in the face of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And this is a progressive revelation. Yeah. And as we see him, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory with yeah. from apo away from the glory that we've sought by our works through the law to a whole new glory that's revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But now back to 1 Corinthians 13, he says, for now we see through a mirror, a glass darkly. Mm -hmm. So it's still not clear. Okay. Right. Right. And it's getting ever clearer, ever, ever clearer. clearer. Not, not, exactly. not, the, not the ever clear that we used to partake of. <laughs> ever, exactly. ever clearing, right? When we see him face to face, yeah, we will be like him. Why? Because we are going to see him as he is. I like how you said that because, you know, uh, we have a pendulum swings in the church where we make it all about... Um, right now or in the future right and and really i see this too that it's i know for my own life that it's progressively getting more clear absolutely as i said at the feet of jesus absolutely and, and i i know that that will continue on yes. until i see him face yeah. to face yeah. but yeah. but that which was uh uh real foggy okay yeah. at one time uh -huh. is becoming less foggy if that exactly. makes any sense it's like the window is being cleaned, cleaned. And exactly <laughs> that's the way it is and i believe we can have as much as we want yeah yeah we can have as much as we want you know and uh you know it's other things you know what does the scripture say in uh matthew 13 about the soul is so the word you know he sows the word and, and there'll be, you know, the, that that's uh, sown in good ground brings forth 30, 60, 100 fold. Well, what makes the difference between the 30, the 60, mm -hmm. and the 100 fold? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think that that depends on the mm -hmm. amount of distractions right. that you allow in your life. Well, he talks about, and this came to me the other day too, was the understanding you know uh, many don't understand well how does the understanding come and, and i was thinking about this how that a lot uh, you know faith by faith we understand yeah okay? it, understanding doesn't uh, a lot of people like the pharisees are trying to acquire understanding oh, exactly and miss the whole boat you yeah. know on top uh -huh. of it but really understanding comes simply by walking intimately with the lord you know, being face to face with the Lord, sitting at the feet of Jesus and letting the word, hearing the word and let the word, his word, bring the understanding to you. You know, so you know, it goes back to that. Again, yeah. it goes back to into, in, to me, intimacy. What it's on the heart of God from the beginning was Adam walked with God. And I was thinking about that. He, he, had, he had such wisdom in, the, in that he named all the animals. Oh, yeah the earth you know what i'm saying and it's just like but it's it doesn't it's not acquired we're so tempted to again thinking it's acquired by our much just research and study and leave out completely what it's really all about you know this morning when she said you know what the word hebrews means crossover well i paused her because i don't take anybody's word Right. Nothing. You know? Yeah. And I learned that a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Back in the 70s, some preacher said that God took uh, one of Adam's ribs to make the woman. That's why men have one less rib no, than women do. And I believe that. And other people believe that. And because of that, <laughs> someone dear to my heart yeah. was humiliated. Mm hmm and and despised the church and ran from Christ yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And that's why 
I don't like to listen. I would sooner watch a sci-fi movie than to watch something that <laughs> portrays truth and has Christ saying something he didn't yeah. say. Oh, yeah, right. absolutely. It does a lot more damage. Absolutely, because the thing is, I mean, I could see it and go, well, that's a bunch of hogwash. He never said that. But to a person who is biblically illiterate, they right. could take that for gospel truth, mm -hmm. quote it, and then be humiliated to find out what they said wasn't true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I only want to speak the truth. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, when she said that, I paused it and I looked it up. And when I read that definition, mm. it was just like the Holy Ghost exploded in my heart. <laughs> That's awesome. And that was, just, it took me to so many scriptures. Oh, yeah. That's what it happens. And yeah. I like, see, that is where it's at. Yeah. When Bing. the teacher teaches you. Yeah. You yeah. know, and Jim turned around. I told Jim all that I got. He said, did you just get all that from her? I said, no, I got that from the Holy Ghost. <laughs> well, that's it. It's, it's, like, uh, it's like throwing a lat, uh, match on a, a pool of gasoline. You yes, know? it is. Hallelujah. We've done, I've done that with different ones like Greg and different ones that are, I'll turn them on and it's like, he'll get into one minute yeah. and it's, I'm off to the races and I'm it's, talking on the screen to Greg. I'll say, I'll be, I'll get right back with you, Greg, but I'm kind of exactly. busy. Right now. <laughs> yeah. It stirs yeah. up. It stirs up the gift. <laughs> it stirs up the gift, right? Within you. Yes. And I love that. I love that. And how the Holy Spirit just connects all the dots and shows you that it is according to the scripture. You know what I'm saying? That this truth is according to the scripture and, and the fruit of life that you that you see in your yeah. life, that is born in your life because of it. Absolutely. And you know, the thing is, the the spirit of the the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus raises is, us up mm. above the law of sin and death. Yeah. So even though sickness is working in my body to take me down, mm. the resurrection life gives me buoyancy yeah. to come above it mm. and uh, feel wonderful. Oh, yeah. In the midst of the adversity. In the midst of it. Yes. And that's that describes Jesus on a on the cross, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. His life is life. Glory to God. I love that scripture in uh, Romans 5. If when we were enemies, we were reconciled, mm. how much more? Mm. Shall we be saved through his life? His life. His life is saving us. That's yes. right. Yeah. And we were listening to that earlier before we came on about the saving of the soul, mm -hmm. you know, and what that actually means. And uh, yes, a lot of people are taught that, well, that means going to heaven one day yeah. if you say the prayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we need saving right today. Yeah. Right? Yes, I think it's As we face. I think it's in Luke that says that uh, in patience, you possess your soul. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's good. In patience, you possess your soul. Yeah. yeah it's That goes along with what I was saying in James. Let patience have its perfect work. Right. That Absolutely. you might be per complete and, and lacking exactly. nothing. Exactly. Because really... Uh, the saving of the soul, that is so big because in our spirit, we received everything when we were born again. We received Christ. We received the fullness yeah. of the Godhead yes. in us, in Christ. And yet, until we get our mind renewed to the truth, we don't have an experiential knowledge right. of what Christ has done. Until we experience it in our feelings, in our emotions. Yeah. You know, 
uh, when, uh, you know, in Isaiah 26, 3, it says he will keep him in perfect mm -hmm. peace. With perfect. Tomorrow. Perfect is shalom. Peace, shalom. Mm -hmm. It's peace, peace. Whose mind is stayed on you. And it's like, can can our mind can mm. our mind be stayed on him mm -hmm. in the midst of contradictory circumstances? Mm. Can we see Christ is our life when all hell is breaking out against us? That's the saving of the soul. Right. When your mind is stayed, it's solid, it's unmovable. What does the scripture say? Is it in, uh, is it Isaiah? Isaiah 32, 17. Let's see here what we find. Well, when you were talking, I'm going to yeah. just mention this while you turn that. When you're, we're talking about um, repentance is really God changing your mind. Absolutely. To, to, to yeah. see, to think different. And, and, and I was thinking about children again, that scripture in Ephesians that says that we be not henceforth no more children tossed to and fro carried about by every wind of doctrine and exactly. slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they let lie yeah wait wait to deceive exactly it's like exactly. we need to understand there's things out there that are that are, are are there intentionally trying to trip people up exactly you know revert you back to works righteousness distract you away from christ and your and who you are in Christ, you yeah. know, you back to self. Yeah, absolutely. And I've got, listen, I, and you know, it, I love it when people come and sit under the word, but then I see a lot of people go to another word. Oh yeah. And they wonder why they're, they're struggling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. And I, I like, I think Matt said, he says, I'm on, I'm on a strict diet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we do have to, we do have to, but, you know, again, too, you have children, you have people that are new, you know, in the faith. And so we were seeing how important it is to. Absolutely. To new one, ones to be established. One, one thing this uh, gal said, she said, you know, it's all right to be a child. It's all mm -hmm. right to be a baby when you're a baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not all right to be a baby when you've been in it for 30 years, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's another name for that. that. Um, but in Isaiah 32, 17 and 18, it says the work or the product mm. of righteousness shall be peace. Mm. Okay. This is what faith righteousness produces. Yes. Peace. 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 I'm right with God, not mm. because of anything I did or will do, but I'm right with God because God did it for me in Christ without any of my effort. And how twisted is that the gospel that says, um, it's about our works uh, and do, doing what God, you know, God's requiring for us to do to make him happy. No. You know, it's such a twisted thing. Oh, yeah. Know? And so many people trying to live what they call the Christian life. Yeah. Well, I'm trying my best to live the Christian life. You know, so many times the Lord will tell us something to do. Right. Not to do. Right. Not to please. Well, in a roundabout way, it does please God because right. uh, we're not destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> it makes us. It makes him happy when we don't run out on the on the highway. Exactly, or run through the house with scissors. You know, uh, he don't want us to poke ourselves in the eye. He's happy, but you know, it. You got to realize that love is not self seeking. Love it, it. God doesn't tell us anything to do to uh, satisfy some 
thing in him. The <laughs> only thing he's trying to do is give us all of his goodness. Right. Shower us with his blessing. Yes. So we can live a good life and get through this life um, uh, the easiest way, you know? He doesn't and be, want to and be an expression to... and be an expression of who he is in this. Absolutely. You know, if we don't, if we're not a recipient of God's goodness, then we can't show that goodness to other people. No. You can't give what you don't got. Ooh, and yeah. if you think God's a hard taskmaster, you are going to be one piece of work. Yeah. And you are not going to be, nobody's going to want to be around you. <laughs> we're gonna be a real pharisaical prig <laughs> in so and so and so yeah yeah you have to be clear we have to be clear with such words yeah look at this love this so it says that in um isaiah 32 17 the work of righteousness the product what righteousness produces in our life is peace and the effect of righteousness this is what righteousness will affect you with quietness mm -hmm. and assurance mm -hmm. forever yeah. a place of safety mm -hmm. and then in verse in uh, chapter oh wait a minute let me see here that word assurance I have both with fact and feeling hmm. boldness. That's righteous. I was just going to read that very same verse in the Amplified because it okay. kind of brings that out. It says the effect of righteousness will be peace internal and external, you know, and the result of that righteousness will be quietness, confident trust forever and my people shall dwell in peaceful habitations and safe dwellings and in quiet resting places. That's having peace in the middle of no matter what's going on around you. Mm. Is that I would say that is talking about the salvation of the soul. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. I mean, listen, I you know what? I got the whole ball of wax, baby, in my spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know what? You can have it all in your spirit and live like hell on earth <laughs> because you haven't renewed your soul. Yeah, because you've not renewed your mind to the truth of what God has done in you. Yes, that is a sad situation. Mm -hmm. Because you know what you're gonna do if you don't have this salvation as a soul, you're still gonna live like a pauper. Yeah, if you forget who you are. If you don't know, if, yeah. you, if you don't know, I mean, listen, baby, for 34 years, we didn't know who we were, but we're still, we're, we're coming into it now. So for 34 years, I was on the treadmill from hell, you know, and I was saved, but I didn't even know I was saved. From one day to the next. They were in the wilderness for 40 years. <laughs> yeah. Wandered around for 40 years. My goodness, my goodness. <laughs> now listen to this. In chapter 33 of Isaiah, another good word. In 6 and 7. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability, which means security, of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. That's to be awestruck with mm. the excellency of God. Mm. Behold, their valiant ones shall cry without, and the ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. Wow. I'll tell you, yeah, the ambassador of peace will weep bitterly when we look we're the ambassadors of peace. Mm -hmm. We weep when we see people that are so deceived. Yes, yes. That, that put on their Sunday best and go to church and put on their mask and pretend that everything is good when they're broken. 
Mm. Their mm. lives are falling apart. And they got the Prince of Peace on the inside of them. Mm. Yet they've never come to know him experientially. That reminds me where Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Yeah. They will be called the, the sons of God. Is that right? Is that what it says? I believe so. But it's, uh, you know, I heard a word years ago about how that, that the peacemakers are coming into bloom. The peacemakers are coming into full bloom. They've been in the bud, but they're coming into full bloom. And that's through the word of life, you know? Yes. Um, and that peacemaker is one that's able, that first believes and had his heart fully persuaded about this being justified by faith we have peace with god absolutely blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of god children of god yeah, yeah. Children of god. Children know, of god, they know they're the children they know who they are they're not That's orphans right. they're That's children right. of god they're, they're not, not slaves of egypt they're children they're not even children. children they know who they are yeah, yeah they know who they are there's another scripture that says, be perfect, even as your father in heaven is perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, how's that going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> you, only got, you have to receive it. You have to receive that perfection. It's not through toil and labor. It's not through your effort. It's through what Christ did. Yeah. He says, he said this, he said, unless your righteousness exceed yes. the righteousness of the Pharisees, Pharisees, you shall in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Because That's... the Pharisees was a works righteousness. Our righteousness is a faith righteousness, which is a gift. Wow. That's pretty simple. Yeah. Amen. You know, I feel like the Lord has been showing me some things on perfection. You know, we're complete in Christ. We're perfect in Christ. So that's a done deal. I mean, that is. Yeah. But to me, it's it's a heart that's being um, fully persuaded to well, believe. Perfection means mature. Mm -hmm. Fully grown, mature man. Mm -hmm. So we're growing up into the head. Right, mm -hmm. growing up into Christ, right. as Paul said in uh, Galatians, he said, "You know, he said, he said, I <laughs> prevail again uh, in birth for you. The Christ be formed in you." Mm -hmm. Okay, so what he's saying, I think that's in chapter four. Yeah, uh, chapter four, yes, verse yes. nineteen. My little children of whom I travail in birth again. Well, when did he travail in birth for them before? To bring them into Christ. He prayed the Christ that would be birthed in their heart. But now he's saying, I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Mm -hmm. Till Christ's nature be formed in you. Mm. That's another salvation of the soul. Mm -hmm. When Christ is formed in us and you can see Christ right. through <laughs> our behavior, our lifestyle. Mm. Right. I well, don't I don't want my life to be a contradiction to the truth that I preach. No and really the work again is the work of allowing your heart to be persuaded that's it the truth, the truth. that is the work that's you know it. it's you because know. We're, we're beings of persuasion <laughs> no we're being persuaded of, of the truth or we're being persuaded of a lie you know and that's how we we mature and grow up into the head who is christ by just simply allowing him to persuade our hearts about what's already you true know. He's you already know, persuaded. God's already uh, persuaded. <laughs> you know, that uh, Averna said this morning, she was talking about 
uh, being like Christ, you know? <laughs> and she said, you know, so you're you're at home and you you yell to your kids, shut your face! Be gonna show you that I'm shutting for you, something like that. And she says, now get ready for church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> put the smile on the face when you get through the door. Really? <clears throat> Yeah. It's like, come on, man, let's get real. And, you know, I saw myself. Oh, yeah. I saw myself in that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't want to be that way. No. Lord, let your attributes, let your attributes be, um, come alive in me, you know? And a lot of it, again, it goes back to what people are hearing. And what they're believing, what they're being persuaded about. And as a man believes in his heart, so is he. Yeah. You know, that fruit is born in our, our lives. And so many, it's it's awful because what they do, they go to a, a place um, of behavior modification, which actually furthers to uh, suppress what God wants to bring forth in their life. Because oh, their focus is on them and how they need to be a better this and better that and how they need to produce the fruit and yes, how they need yes. to be the how they need to be the promise keeper how yes. they need to be faithful are you faithful to you know do this and faithful to do so the focus is on the self on self yes. instead of Christ exactly exactly yeah and they're on I call it the merry go round from hell oh yeah. yeah you know because there's no life in it you might have yes if you if you do have any kind of life at all in all that it's because you think that somehow you have uh, accomplished something to make something happen so you feel real good about that so you know you're up one day and down the but next that's the that's the that's the yeah uh, that's the uh, merry go round and the uh, and the roller coaster from hell <laughs> yeah cuz you're you up know? one day and down the next you know uh, that brings me back to the glory of the law that spoke up in 2 Corinthians 3, where it says the law did have a glory, but they had to put a veil on Moses' face. And I used to think that they put a veil on Moses' face because his face was so bright. But it wasn't because of that. They put a veil on his face because they he didn't want the people to see that light diminish mm. because if it diminished, he would go up, his face would get bright and come down and it diminished. They what a mean. picture, what a picture of living by the law. Yeah. You mm. know, you get on that treadmill from hell and you do good <laughs> and your face lights up yeah. and then you do bad. And your face is like Cain. Why has your countenance fallen? Yeah. You know? And it's up and down and up and down. But when you well, look at the face. Honestly, of this one gets me up in the morning because I know that I've been there. Yeah. And I know where I'm at now. And yeah. I'm not as much on that treadmill from hell anymore. Yeah. And I, I'm your calm now and again. I'm, I'm sensing more of an increasing glory. Yeah. Instead yeah. of uh, okay. up and down and fading yeah. thing, you know? And oh, it's a, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, and my boast, my boast is not my flesh. Exactly. It's in Christ. My is, my, yeah, my boast is Christ and the cross and, and, and the gospel of what the gospel has realized for me as I continue to just persuade, uh, my, allow my heart to be persuaded. Exactly. To the gospel. Yeah. And it's like, it's like you tell, you know, and, and I understand, and it's kind of nice, I understand, because if I didn't, then I would probably be deceived myself, because I, I understand where people are in this thing. You you know, know, it's, just like, price, right? it's hard for people, wherever they're at, because everyone's in a different place, it's hard for people to grasp what you're saying, you know. 
it's hard for people to grasp it, you know, but we continue to speak the truth in love, yeah. you know, understand with understanding and grace, understand and helping people that as long as they continue to come and as long as they continue to sit and listen to the word, it will transform their life. Yeah. The word will transform their life. Amen. And you know what, Rick, I think that <clears throat> builds up that the empathy and the compassion of Christ in us for those people, because we've all been there. Yeah. Right? When you see them struggle, all you want to do is just love on them and encourage them in the word. Just share the word with them. Yeah. yeah. Love Christ. Yeah, that's right. You know, that reminds me of when I went to uh, this maximum security prison when I was 25 years old, when I just got saved. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know squat. I really didn't know anything. And yet, I knew the love yeah. that Christ had mm -hmm. for these people. And I'm trying to express this love mm -hmm. for them. And I remember saying, with all of my heart, I said, you know, I would lose a limb. I would lose a leg. I would lose an eye if I could just get you to see how much Christ loves you mm -hmm. and that he died for you. And I said that with all the compassion of Christ. Mm -hmm. And they said to me, why? Why does a beautiful woman like you come into this place mm -hmm. on a Wednesday night to teach a bunch of losers. Mm. Mm. I said, because I love you mm. and I care about you and I want you to be saved. I want to see you in eternity. I mean, that struck their heart. I didn't know anything about anything, but I did know the love of God. Yeah. And yeah. that love penetrated. Yeah. People know what's real. Mm. Yes, they do. Yeah, and the message message is simple. It's getting clearer and, and it's very simple. It's the simplicity that's in Christ. And you know how religion has made it so complex. Yeah. And, um, but, and, and when we say religion, I mean the carnal mind. You Absolutely. Know? Um, but uh, yeah, I mean... I mean, the love of Christ was seen on you. And that's the message. That's it. The and message. that's what Iberna said this morning. She said, you know, that seed, that seed in you speaks. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That seed was to speak. And she says, <clears throat> it doesn't want to spout a bunch of scripture. Right, right. It wants to speak. The love of God. Yeah. You know, say say what he tells you to say. Yeah. Do what he tells you to do. Yes. And it 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 works. You know, when we get outside of that and try to do our own thing. Yeah. Uh it can be disastrous. Well, we're trying to sell Jesus. Yeah. And, yeah. And, but that's sometimes all that a lot of people have because of where they're at in their own belief system. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the answer is to just allow God to love us so that we become lovable. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then go and spread the love. <laughs> be good receivers. You know, that's yeah. all that we Absolutely. have to be. Yeah, keep receiving, receiving, and he says, "Freely you received, freely, freely give. give." Right, but you can't give what you don't got, so you better get it. Your receiver on. <laughs> we can always tell when we haven't been receiving. <laughs> oh yeah. <That's> true. <laughs> Yeah. I was thinking yes, about this. It says, for in Christ, in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision avails anything 
nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. Yeah. Right. Amen. That's the picture. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And before you were talking about boasting, and it brought me to Galatians 6 14. For God forbid that I should glory, saving the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified to me and I to the world. Mm. Hallelujah. The circumcision of the cross circumcised me from the flesh. Live in that reality. Well, this is good. Uh, there's been a lot said in a short time here. Hi, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have anything you'd like to, to add? <clears throat> Laura, go ahead and unmute yourself there. There you go. Um, I've had, it's always timely uh, when I listen to you guys. Um, yesterday, I started to repent for some things and walk away from it. Um, and something i was listening to this this music um and then all of a sudden i stopped the music and just kept repeating um name above name above every name and i started singing that and you know words started coming and then um as i'm cleaning you know he's God was kind of stirring my heart on what that means, you know, his name. And then I paused that and I got on Facebook and there was a message about how the devil has no name. He just has a title. And I was like, oh, well, that's cool. And, uh, and then a little bit later, <laughs> uh, there was another message about our name. And who God says we are. And then. Um, it, it's been. Oh, I'm going to cry. I've been I've been um in a pit and uh there's part of me that I just um, I haven't wanted to surrender I've had half I've had one foot in a in the world and I mean ever since I've known you guys um, I think that's why he put me smack dab in Myrtle Beach um, the very first encounter with you Beulah you were talking about a message and having a healthy eye um, you didn't know me you were talking to somebody but then you looked at me and um, I knew it was the Holy Spirit because you pierced me and then after it was funny because I was sitting in the message and Rick uh, said, return back to innocence, 
And Rick, I, I think I told you about that. But uh, my friend Steph had that tattooed on her hip. And she looked at me and I, I, I had all of my friends tell me that I wasn't saved, that you couldn't walk in God's perfection. And uh, she even contacted my roommate to verify your church. She was like, is this a good church for us to go to? Because we have to protect Laura. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> And so it's funny because when when I, we got to the church, there was a, a Bible study. And I remember asking Mike, Mike was leading it. And he said, he started talking about perfection. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, I think it was Galatians, or, um, Second Corinthians, being a new creation. Yeah. And, uh, and then I asked the question, can you walk in God's perfection? And I could tell Steph was, she was uh, jumping in her seat and she was <laughs> boiling <laughs> because here, here God led me to a place and, and still um, I let this, this seed of doubt or I don't even know what it is. Um, uh, Maybe I used it as an excuse to step away from my calling. Uh, but yesterday, as as this this name, you know, God keeps bringing this up, and uh, it was uh, yesterday. I was reminded. So a few months ago, I was sitting there cleaning a toilet, uh, out of all things. <laughs> and God said, I placed a mantle over your head. Mm. And uh and I, I pictured a fireplace mantle. I was like, that's not it. I was like, what's a mantle? And I was like, well, obviously you're saying this because I don't even know what you're talking about. And uh so then I looked it up and it, it talked about Elijah and Elijah. And uh and It was, you know, I have an understanding that I haven't um, abided it. I, I don't know, uh, yielded to. I haven't yielded to love. I've been drawing life from the world. And um, I just feel stuck. Uh, And I know it's, I'm just, I'm just done feeling stuck. Mm -hmm. Well, you ain't stuck anymore, girl. Yeah. No, you're not stuck anymore because um, we never confess something that we want to continue in. It's because of your, your, your free that you can say it, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, you just what you've said um, shows me uh, that uh, you're done with it, baby. You are done with it. And when you were talking about um, living a life of perfection, um, it reminded me of Hebrews ten fourteen. It says, "For by one offering, he hath perfected forever, forever." Yeah them that are sanctified <laughs> so that's the only way that you can be perfect is your heavenly father is perfect and that is receiving the gift of that perfection right. mm -hmm. that is only in christ amen i love you laura you are just such a <laughs> sweet sweet gal and um you're you're quite transparent which is a beautiful thing Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. I want to pray for you right now. Appreciate your heart, Laura. I just see yeah. it's totally just the way you, uh, you know, come on and uh, 
are so transparent. It shows a heart that's that has a heart after God. Absolutely. Those, Absolutely. Voices, those voices will try to those contrary voices will try and tell you otherwise. Oh yeah. But but really, it's it, it's uh, <clears throat> just trying to keep you in that place of of doubt. But you need to understand uh, what I see is a very soft, tender heart. Amen. Just like David had a heart after God, right? Yeah. Even even, even though he had a, a lot of mess going on at times. Oh, yeah. God, he says he, he was a man after God's own heart. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and that's what I see. I just see a desire. I just see a desire for everything that God wants for your life. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just want us to pray. Uh, for you and uh, Lord I just lift up Laura right now Yes, I just thank you for her honesty and her uh, forthcoming in just sharing her heart and Lord I just thank you Father that you are in her both to give her the will and the ability to do your good pleasure it's not through her faithfulness, but it's through your faithfulness, yes. Lord. That good work that you've began in her, you will perfect it. Yes. And so, Father, we thank you thank that you, you are strengthening her in the inner man, Lord God. Father, to make those, do and make those decisions that uh, she feels in her heart, Lord. And uh, we just thank you. We thank you for the peace of God that passes all understanding to flood her heart and mind yeah. as she keeps her mind stayed on you, Lord God. Do that glorious work in her that she desires, Lord Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 Where do you live, Laura? <laughs> Um, Missouri. Okay. Outside of St. Louis. Okay. Uh, about 45. Yeah, I'm actually moving. I was, I told Dylan, I said, we're moving to Myrtle Beach. He goes, oh, no! <laughs> you know, we've been Alan, trying to get to move here for, for years. <laughs> we're still yeah, I know. Yeah, we're, uh, I have a feeling I'm not going to stay in Missouri. That's just a feeling, though. Hold on. I see a powerful woman of God. That's what yeah. I see. Yeah. I mean, every time you speak, you bring something rich right. to all of us. And uh, that's why these, I think these gathering togethers are so important. So because, you know, the enemy wants to get us out alone you know, and, and try to, to, to you know, speak all kind of nonsense to us. And just, I'm telling you, what I see, what everyone else sees, is a powerful woman of God, has a very tender for the Lord. And uh, yeah, we're all in that process. We all have fluctuations. <laughs> Believe me, we all have our fluctuations. Yeah. Uh, but God sees the heart, you know? Yeah. yeah. After his and what's on his heart. So. $25, higher than all, plenty of time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I'd love for you to move to Myrtle Beach. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll get the hey, can... poster out right now. Yeah. Okay. Should I make it? Hey. Go ahead and make it up. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just get clients out there. I can move out there. Oh, there's sure. thousands there's of lots of places down here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make that happen quick. <laughs> You'd make a lot of people cry. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's a, another. Huh? Yeah. I just, I mean, just, you know, si since I've we've known you, we've been connected, you know, and we see the process, but I see so much more the fruit of god's life in you now oh yeah yeah, yeah. You know? so don't ever let the enemy try and tell no. you anything different because 
you, your heart is being fully persuaded to believe. And you have, listen, we were all wrapped up in a lot of per, uh, perfection by performance. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh yeah, which is, which is oh, a yeah, you know what I'm saying a treadmill from hell, you know. Yeah, That's true. And, uh, yeah. It, it what's hard is it it does come from sincere people that we love, you know, and all these things, and that are absolutely convinced. No, this is the truth, and blah blah blah, you know. But is it really bringing forth the fruit of yeah. God? Like we said, freedom. is it bringing forth freedom and peace, or is it bringing forth criticism and judgment? Yeah. You know? Amen. <clears throat> you know, for years, for years, uh, Jan and I go back many, many years. And for years, Jan wanted to be like me. Mm. He was praying, God, make me bold like Beulah. Why am I so quiet? And I'm praying, Lord, make me like Jan. Quiet like Jan. I said, why am I so loud and boisterous? Why can't I be nice and gentle like Jan is? And you know what? Neither one of us was comfortable in our own skin. <laughs> Until Christ revealed to us that, you know what? Who you are is good. Yeah. Well, just be you. Don't try to be somebody you're not. Exactly. Just be real. You don't want two of the identical clump of, clumps of clay. No. <laughs> no. Same clumps of clay. Yeah. No beauty in that. Yeah. No. God's a lot more. Um, he's a creative. He's very. He's he's a creator. He's very creative. You know, look at the flowers. Look at the. You know, and he's created all of us different. You know. And they all have names. Yeah. <laughs> you know. They're there's people that I could reach that Jan could never reach. And there are people that Jan will reach that I could never reach. You know, my personality would turn them right off. Did I, did I ever tell you I ended up at a swingers party <laughs> last summer? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I ended up there and God still used me. I was, I got high and, uh, this guy came in, he sat down, and it was interesting. It was, I I couldn't believe it. Um, I'm sitting across from him, and he said, hey, are you an artist? He said, yeah, and these specific things started coming to my mind. And uh, I said, Jesus wants a relationship with you. Now, mind you, I'm around a bunch of couples and the guys start getting up and they're going into the kitchen. I'm not paying any attention, but I can feel that they're upset. Their wives are coming closer and sitting around me. And I keep speaking to the guy and his girlfriend. And, uh, and I, I kept saying all these things and, and there was some things in quiet that I didn't sp say specific, specifically, but um, I said, you've been asking and he's answering and I just want you to know that he loves you. And here I am high. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm stoned out of my mind. I hadn't gotten stoned, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but it was interesting all the guys they just started leaving one by one and um they knew so it, it was a friend of a friend and i was like oh it's a, it's a lifestyle party i I'm, I'm not gonna go well i ended up changing my mind because i was like well i don't have like that thing in me that's making my stomach turn like i kind of have this piece that i need to go mm. And so I did, mm. and sure enough, um, <laughs> you know, <I've, laughs> I don't know. I mean, I still see the friends, and you know, they weren't really happy uh, that I did that. But <laughs> my cousin explained to them. They're like, he, uh, my cousin several times when we're out, he, you know, he's drunk, and he goes, you know, Laura, he goes, never stop being who you are. He's like, it makes a big impact. And uh, because he's seen me in, in all 
all walks. Yeah. And there's one thing that I've never, never walked away from. And that's knowing that God loves us. Amen. Yeah. And, um, and in, in the darkest places, I, I was on a, I was on a boat. We're partying, drinking, and, uh, you know, smoking pot and there's this girl sitting next to me and again I I had that moment and I said I know this isn't the right time but I let her know Jesus loved her and she looked at me like what I said (laughs) I told you it's not the right time but this is a seed that's being planted right now and later you will think about this moment and just reflect on that that he does love you Mm-hmm. And, um, and then we went on, we went on to party some more. Like it was, I mean, so that kind of messes me up. Uh, cause it's not right to live like that. Um, that's not who I want to be. You know, that's, that's, that's God. I, I know that's the way I guess I, I look at that is God's using the Romans eight twenty eight, um, he uses all things for his glory. Even um, huh? Yeah, even in our weakness, he can be strong. You know? Yeah, yeah. And and would and would these people have ever gotten touched? You know, they're never they're not around believers. They're, <laughs> I mean, some of these people, they're they're in really dark places yeah you wouldn't see them at you wouldn't you would never see them at church no and uh so um i know that jesus has the habit of popping out (laughs) at the least expected moment hello because he's in there and he's like okay i'm going to use this opportunity he doesn't care Uh what you are or what's going on but when he wants to love on somebody, he'll just pop out of you, Laura. I know. <laughs> He's so good. Amen. Yeah, that really yeah. with the carnal mind. Yeah. <laughs> like, because the carnal mind has it all religiously figured out. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Jesus was, I mean, he was uh, a friend of sinners. He hang yes, out he with all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, so he was labeled as different things too. But uh, he says the sick is is the ones that need a physician. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he didn't say go. He didn't tell the world come into all the churches and hear the gospel. He said, yeah, go into all the world and and proclaim it. You know. Yeah. So, I mean, even in the midst of all that, even in the, I see even in the midst of your process. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not that you. Uh, think that that you know i mean i can see where the lord's doing a work in your heart you know Mm -hmm. and he's he's showing you uh, different things but even in the midst of that whole process like Beulah said he's still going to pop out because he's in your heart that's where your heart really is you can't help but speak jesus and mess up parties (laughs) you know (laughs) there honestly i feel like uh (laughs) <laughs> they're kind of like my cousin i i love him because he's like laura's coming you know um he's he's wild uh i don't think some of his friends like me around but he's very adamant about always inviting me and uh yeah. he walked away from god he said he doesn't believe in god and i said you do believe in god and he said well, how can you say that? You know, because he's he's got this anger. I said, you're angry and you, you're not going to tell me that you believe in God, but you see him through me and mm-hmm. you can't deny that. You know, you, you pull me aside and you say all these things and um, you see God in me. It's not because, I mean, what's a pure heart without God? And uh, that's what you see even even at my lowest, he sees that. And um, he's like, never lose that. It can't be lost. It's sealed. Yeah. And 
That's why so, he likes you around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he likes God. <laughs> right. right. He, sees he doesn't. Him. He doesn't like religion. Right. He I, does. I remember when that in that uh, movie, um, Town of Monte Cristo, he's put thrown into a dungeon, you know, and, yeah. and accused and all that, and missed, you know, just abused. abused, and he's in prison with this old guy and. He, the the old guy tries to tell him about God and he says, I don't believe in God. And the old man says, that's okay. God believes in you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's exactly what, that's what I've told him. Not knowing that movie. But uh, there was a time I, I got in this heated like discussion about God and God shut me up real quick. Like I'm in the middle, you know, like when you're in the middle of like being wrong, you continue to be wrong until you're done with the thought. <laughs> you're like, okay, I was wrong, but you wait. No, I was on the phone and I, it's all heated. And it, it was it is because God was there, obviously. But it, it was interesting because it was, I think he acknowledged that God shut my mouth. Instantly, I'm mid like, God up! And I stopped. And I said, I'm wrong. And my cousin has a, he could never admit that he's wrong. He could, he could never do what just happened. Mm -hmm. And he was like, wow. Like, <laughs> um, and God knew that. Like, God knows, he knows that how he can reach my cousin yeah because yeah. this guy he's the best at every you know he, he's the best at everything and he's never wrong mm. he's perfect mm. <laughs> but but yeah so um thank you i i always try to remember to get on these zoom calls um thank you for coming on and thanks for yeah, yeah. anita did you have something that you'd like to share before we close out yeah, I did from the word, but I'm going to push that aside for a minute and just say that this has really blessed me. It really touched my heart, um, this this whole hour and a half. And, uh, and Laura, you have a very gentle spirit. You've got a beautiful spirit. And it, it shows the Holy Spirit's in your spirit. And, and Jesus is there, his presence. And um, you're showing people not religion, but relationship. Yeah, and that's what it's about. It's a personal relationship that they're seeing from you, and and just God's using you powerfully in whatever situation you're in. You're you've been a light in the darkness. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sure many times, and I just want to encourage you that that uh, you have the Lord in you for sure, and uh, you know you're you're sowing seeds as you go. You're sowing seeds of truth but they see that relationship that you have with the Lord. And that plants a powerful seed that the Holy Spirit's gonna use in their hearts, in their minds to transform people. You may never see all the fruit of that, but mm -hmm. but there'll be much fruit. So uh, I just, I this it. really yeah, blessed me. Your transparency blessed me too. Amen. Yeah, right. I love it because what you shared is really representative of so many others that will be listening to this. Oh yeah. You know, that yeah. have these struggles. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, I forgot this was recorded. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's and it's being shared yeah. around the world, Laura. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you don't want us to share it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's good because yeah. I think it's uh it really ministers this when you're transparent like this it really ministers mm -hmm. to where people are, are at you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and, um, and it just uh you know the the thing is that we need to understand that god is at work in us both to will mm -hmm. and to do his good pleasure yeah so it's not us trying to clean up ourselves yeah we gotta yeah. get from that god is working in you That's and he knows your heart he knows the desire of your heart he's put it there and he's working mm -hmm. it out all that other stuff He's working it out. Oh, yeah. He's working it out of your life. Yeah. God doesn't wait until we get it all together, right? Which we probably will never get it all together on this earth. Before but him. He doesn't okay. wait. Yeah, he'll speak through you. He'll work through you. 
even when we don't have our doctrine down pat, we don't have our theological beliefs down pat, or maybe all correct. But, you know, we're just, we need to be ready in season and out of season for him to just speak through us and work yeah. through us. And yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's what I was going to say about perfection, too, you know, is that we don't have to be perfect in ourselves because he's perfect. Mm -hmm. you know, we live out of him, you know, yeah. and our imperfection is if we just give that to him, too, you know, and, yeah. and he's perfect. And we listen, we believe me, we've all had things uh, that we uh, in our lives that we didn't want to be attracted to or have that desire in our life. We all, okay? And still yeah. in the process, okay? But we can all, I know on this Zoom, we can, we all know that it's the word that's working in us. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the things that we were attracted to, all of a sudden, we're not as attracted to anymore because we know it doesn't have life. Right, right. There's no life in that. And it's just like, it's been a process of persuasion. Yeah. The heart. You know, and it's just like that, that is God, you know, just circumcising, you know, our hearts and, and, and dispelling that which needs to be taken out and bearing the fruit of, of true life. So it's just awesome to see how God works in us. Oh, yeah. You right. can rest, you know, in that, in working. At the, the work that he, he began in you, he will continue. So it's an awesome thing He's faithful. yeah anybody mm -hmm. else have anything before we close we're going to pray for Beulah and Jim you feeling okay oh Are yeah you? I'm fine thank you okay. I'm just listening so you getting stronger Beulah as far as your body and stuff I'm getting there brother okay <laughs> sister we love you <laughs> amen Praise God. Well, let's go ahead and close. Jim, I love how you, I pick on you because I love how you close in prayer. You just have a, a, a real heart for that. So thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time together. We consider it to be a, a great blessing to us individually because each of us takes something away from it when yes, we yes. listen to one another. Lord, nothing is lost. I pray for each and every one here. Lord, that you would carry us and, and enlighten us in the things that we have need of. God. Lord, I thank you for this time together and bless each one in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's been good. God bless you all. Hopefully see you Sunday. Yes. Okay. We're believing for it. Yes. We love you. Love you too. God bless, God bless you. you all. Thanks for sharing the words of life. It's been good. It's thank good. you, Pastor.